Hello everyone, Jackson Gomez here. And today we'll be talking a little bit about interweb as part of the Powering the Web with Delphi session. This presentation was prepared by Chad Hover, but due to enforcing circumstances, I am your presenter today. Chad Hover, I think that everyone knows, knows him, is the creator of Indie, Interweb, Crosstalk, Cosmos, and many other projects. Jackson Gomez, your presenters. I am a former HZ employee. I'm also active, an active member of the Brazilian Delphi community. And I am also the creator of the user security component. We'd like to thank Jim for the invitation for us to be here. And let's start. And for those that are not familiar with Interweb, let me do a little introduction for you. Interweb is the VCL equivalent for the web. Okay. And it's basically a web framework for building web apps with Delphi. Interweb main goal is to close the gap between the Delphi developers and web development. Because we know that web development can be a little bit intimidating, especially that if, if you're coming from the old way of developing apps, like we started with Delphi 1, some of us started with Turbo Pascal and I know that I've been there as well because web development is a little bit intimidating. So Interweb comes here to close this gap for you. Especially because with Interweb, you don't need to learn a lot about HTML, JavaScript, and Cascade style sheets. That's the core of web development. And also Interweb does all these complicated things for you. And, and everything's under the hood, so you don't need to worry about how to write an HTML page or JavaScript library or how to use cascade style sheets. This is the basic, okay? Of course, you can, when you're developing a web app with Interweb, you can dive into all this, all these things, HTML, JavaScript, but you don't need to. As with any tool out there, there is a learning curve to it, okay? But with Interweb, this learning curve is relatively smooth. Why I say that? Because you will basically be doing what you are already doing when you're developing a desktop app or a client server app. You'll be dragging and dropping components using data modules, reports, threads, and basically everything that you use with Delphi. Even you, uh, you'll be able to access the Windows API on the server side. Okay. One main point in Interweb is that it allows you to reuse most of your Delphi code base on your web apps. This is particularly important when you have a very large code base, as you don't want to start from the scratch, of course. So you can use Interweb to extend any client-server app that you have and add an extra web module for it, or you can also develop a full version of your app on the web using Interweb. And now your code base can be shared between your client-server app and the web version of your app that was built with Interweb. Now I want to show you guys some screenshots showing some interweb user interface controls for just for you to have an idea. Okay. Uh, this first screenshot shows a tree view and also a lot of other controls like checkboxes, uh, text boxes, buttons, and even a link. This one shows an uh, interweb grid mixed with data tables. I suppose most of you are familiar with the famous data tables web component. Here we have some fancy buttons. Uh, and here we have some DB lookups, database lookups. And here we have the famous Fishback demo ported to interweb. And here we have this very same fish fact demo open in the Delphi IDE. As you can see, you have a DB grid selected and all the properties are on the object inspector as we are used to. It's very simple to change any property on any interweb component. So where we are today? We currently have two versions being developed in parallel and the main version is interweb 15 which is the version being deployed to our customers. We also have version 14 under maintenance mode, but we may have some new releases when there is something very sensitive that needs to be fixed. 
and our customers can't upgrade to the latest version of IntraWeb. Version 17 is being under development since 2018, but schedule has been severely altered by COVID, and we needed to make some adjustments. We added several new major features in 15, and also some of the new features planned to, planned to 17 were implemented in IntraWeb 15 as well. Because of the lim limited session time, we're going to show you some screenshots instead of live demos. So let's have a look at some of these new features available in IntraWeb 15. So let's talk about HTTPCS deployment. The most com common ways of deploying an IntraWeb app are as a service, when you use the embedded in the web server, and as iZappy, when you want to execute your app under IIS. Deploying as a service is straightforward. You just need to install the service and execute it. And deploying as iZappy requires a bit more of work. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, Interweb 15 adds HTTPCS as a deployment option, which is way easier to deploy your apps. Um, HTTPCS is a web server that, that is the foundation of, all of IIS, and it's really, really fast because it removes all the fat that IIS has. Deploying an interweb app using HTTPCS requires no code change from your side. You just need to modify two lines of code in your project file. One of the main points of HTTPCS is that you can have several interweb apps sharing the same, the same IP and the same port, very similar to what you have when you deploy on IIS. This is, a, this is a bit different when you have when you deploy as a service because when you deploy as a service you the application takes one of the ports for itself um, on HTTPCs you don't need to install anything because it's already part of the Windows kernel and it's very simple to deploy as well you just need to install the application your intraweb application as a service and it's my favorite way of deploying apps right now Uh, one of the recent changes that has a huge impact on Interweb is the full Ajax support. For those familiar with Interweb, you know that we have Ajax even before Ajax was a thing, through partial updates, but our Ajax support had some limitations. Uh, Interweb would need to render all controls at once, and you could make changes to these controls like changing captions, enabling or disabling some controls, making these controls visible or invisible, etc. Um, but not all, not all controls had AJAX support like our grids and our trivial. And creating a new control required a full page render, which is a little bit inconvenient these days. And for, for now on, you can create any control using our async events, even full frames. And you have a smoother UI, you have less processing time on the server side, because you only create UI blocks on demand. And as a consequence, you end up optimizing data transfer from the server to the browser. Another area that has some enhancements is the async callbacks. Using async callbacks in Interweb, you can execute any Delphi code from your Interweb app directly from JavaScript. This is exactly what Interweb does when you click a button on your page. You have a JavaScript code on the browser side that triggers a particular code on the server side. This is useful when you want to extend what Interweb already offers to you. It's very useful when you want to develop your own controls or integrate with any third-party JavaScript, li JavaScript library. The example on the screen shows a JavaScript call that, that will execute the multiply procedure on the server side. And before, we had only one signature on one one method signature and now we have four different ones it gives you more possibilities for more information on how to use async callbacks please check our documentation and we also have some new components that were released on interweb 15. the first one is the iw recaptcha uh, that's pretty useful when you want to avoid boots for on accessing your web pages here we have the component, the component being used on some interweb pages. And here we have the component on the designer. So you can view some properties like the secret key and the side key. Here we have the new interweb grids that 
that supports your jQuery grids, including a dataware version of these grids. Also, we have enhancements on our IW edit control, adding support to native HTML5 input types, as you can see on the screenshot. Um, and bootstrap support. This is this the bootstrap support's been around for a while and it's possible to do that using our template engine. And I'm gonna show you some screenshots of that were sent by some interweb users showing how you can have very beautiful user interfaces using bootstrap integrated with interweb. Here we have another one. Graphs and data tables as well. And we also have the new Interweb Certificate Manager. This is a tool that allows you to request and install Let's Encrypt free SSL certificates. You can generate self signed development SSL certificates with Easy. You can also install SSL certificates for HTTP Sys applications on Windows. This tool is free for commercial use, so please have a look at our website for instructions on how to use it. Also some security enhancements that we have are transparent CSP, transparent cores, and also Mac sessions per IP addresses. So let's talk a little bit about Interweb 17. Uh, 17 is a new version that's currently being developed. We know that a lot of people are waiting for this version. And we know that we are late, but we've been hit pretty hard for COVID, and that's why we are late on that. Uh, but we will talk about this mates at the end, okay? So what is 17? 17, what is different on Interweb 17? We have a new page model in Interweb 17 that was designed from scratch. Uh, this is the new model you, that you're going to use from now on to your new, your new pages. But don't worry that the new 17 model will be able to coexist with the current 15 model. Think of 17 as a new UI or a new way of a new way of developing your UI. The focus here is that we wanted to make the UI design a lot easier, but of course 17 is much more than that. 17 uses TypeScript instead of JavaScript. And what are the differences between 17 and 15? On the 15 module, UI is saved on the DFN format and the translation happens on the server. When we are translating the UI interface from DFM to HTML, CSS and JavaScript, it happens on the server side. For 17, the UI is saved using a new format called IWML, and this translation happens on the browser. You can already imply the advantages here, because this translation happens on the browser, we, don't, we use less CPU on the server side, we also have less data being transferred to the browser, and our rendering engine is way simpler. As 17, we use Doom manipulation for that. Our time is a little bit short today, so let me show you a short video of the of the designer integrated into the IDE. Hello everyone, I just want to give you a quick update on where we are with the designer. As you can see here, I have a, an empty page, and what I'm going to do is first I'm going to put a layout into the page. I'm going to use a fixed layout, and the fixed layout allows me to drag and drop things and put them at a specific position, like an X and Y, very much like you're used to in a normal app. So I'll select the fixed, and I'm going to drag it over onto the page. And now I have a, a layout inside of the page. And then I can take individual buttons, and I can put them wherever I want, or edit boxes, or whatever. I can also put other layouts inside of other layouts. So let's take a quick look. Let's take, for example, a simple stack. And we're just going to put it in the middle here. Now, we can't really see it because there's nothing in it yet. So there's a couple things we can do. We can come up here and hover, and we'll see things pop up. So now I can see the simple stack, and I can select it. Now let's start to put some things in the button. So if I drag it here, it's going to stop right here. But if I put it in the simple stack, it's going to go into the simple stack. And I could also do it by dropping it up here. But the cool thing is, see, if I drop it here, 
it's going to go on the fixed. But if I bring it over the layout, you can see I can position it very easily within this simple stack. And so this overrides the XY and we get this type of layout. Just a quick addendum, I forgot to show this earlier, so I'm just adding this on to the end of the video here. But we have, earlier we just showed buttons, but of course there's checkboxes and edits and all the normal stuff that you're used to, as well as much, much more. And this isn't even everything yet. This is just what we're showing right now. But for example, if you want to add a chart, you can select the chart and then you can just bring it over and drop it just like you can anything else. And of course you can data bind this and use it just like any other interweb control. And that's it for today, thank you. We are reaching the end of the video, so let's talk about timeline now. We are 85% complete on Interweb 17. Uh, we were firmly set for August 2020 release, but as we said before, the COVID has impacted us a lot, but we expect Interweb 17 to be ready early 2021 at best. Okay, uh, thank you very much guys for your time. And if you have any questions, please 